most JFK conspiracy theories pivot around the idea that Lee Harvey Oswald wasn't acting alone. There have been multiple theories that there were others who seek the life of the first Catholic president. It was even said that the CIA had a plot to take out the new Willing for Change president. Though the CIA plot sounds bizarre, theorists suggest that the president's alleged comment that he wanted to splinter the CIA into thousands of pieces and scatter it into the winds rubbed the group the wrong way, being that the CIA was disapproving of any change that implied loss of power over the people, instantly made him an agency target. There have even been conspiracy theories that the Mafia wanted the beloved president to be taken care of. This was because Kennedy's brother, Robert, applied major attention on organized crime. His anti-Mafia crusade had led a sharp increase in the number of prosecutions of senior Mafia figures. Some conspiracies even go as far as to say that JFK fell foul of the Illuminati because he wanted to end the Vietnam War, a conflict that was paying the shadowy bankers. This triggered a backlash of vengeance toward the president's life. But are all these conspiracies liable? Bias, reliability, prejudice. These are examples of the natural thought process when coming to the subject of conspiracies. A conspiracy theory is a term that originally was a neutral descriptor for any claim of civil, criminal, or political conspiracy. However, it has come almost exclusively to refer to any fringe theory which explains a historical or current event as the result of a secret plot by conspirators of almost superhuman power and cunning. They are based on a person's natural skepticism. A person who believes in conspiracy theories are labeled as selective doubters. Manipulators against the skepticism conspiracies suggest want the public to believe People who see conspiracy theories behind everything are simply imagining things and are only looking for a fight. David Taylors, who was behind the skeptical reasoning towards why surveillance tapes were missing during 9-11, says, To insist that the truth remains hidden, you'd have to assume that everyone who has reviewed the attacks and the events leading up to them, being the CIA, the Justice Department, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, was incompetent, deceived, or part of the cover-up. Implying that the conspiracy theorists are responsible for the reason to believe why the attack was staged. Though these people who ask the simple questions of, how did cell phones work at 30,000 feet in the air in 2001? The men identified as the 9-11 ringleaders were under surveillance for years beforehand on the suspicion that they were terrorists by a variety of U.S. and allied authorities, including the CIA, along with the FBI. So how is it that they were able to commit such a largely planned homicide? And why were whistleblowers like Sybil Edmonds and Anthony Schaffer intimidated, gagged, and sanctioned, sending a clear signal to others who might be thinking about speaking out? The strongest predictor of a general belief in conspiracies was lack of trust. It's an acquired tendency to focus on intentions and agencies rather than randomness or casual complexity. In an extreme form, it can become paranoia. The more you see the world this way, full of malice and planning instead of circumstance and coincidence, the more likely you are to accept conspiracy theories of all kinds. It doesn't take much to get people to kind of believe in conspiracy theories these days. An article on social science by Jesse Signal titled, It's scary how easy it is to get people to believe in conspiracy theories, paints a picture. Let's say you are convinced Hillary Clinton is the devil, and a few times a day at work, you check the Patriot Eagle America, first muckraker news network, or wherever people are consistently posting new conspiracy theories. Whether the rumor feels truthly enough for you to share it, which is a very low cost, low consequence Audio act, you're not putting anything on the line. But once enough people take a sure, whatever, could be approach to a rumor because it feels truthly to them, it will spread Audio big time Audio. and will also find its way to an enthusiastic true believers who really do believe it and who will work over time to investigate it. It truly is scary how easy it is to get people to believe in conspiracy theories. The article, The Rise of American Conspiracy Theory, by Damon Linker, 
who is a researcher in culture, tells a background about a man in Timbuktu who had five brothers, and out of all those brothers, he became the leader who maliciously took over different parts of Africa. Now, you probably haven't been to the city of Timbuktu in the African country of Mali. You've never seen it, and most likely have never met anyone from there. Yet, I bet most of you, and just about all of you, assume and accept the fact that it exists. I even bet that most of you didn't even catch the fact that I said a story about a man in Timbuktu, which implies that it's not true. But why? Why are you so easy to believe in what I say? You have no personal experience of it at all. The reason is because you trust the authorities who have told you what exists. The map and glow makers, the people who are mentioned on the news from time to time, the teachers and authors of textbooks who made passing references to the city, and the storied history lessons you learned as a child. Most of the things we claim to know about the world beyond our immediate experience are held precisely on faith, as a matter of trust in those who give the knowledge to us in the first place. We all know, or all should know, that the imaginary number of pi goes on forever, and if you find yourself in a situation where you're being chased down by a cheetah, for whatever reason you would be, it's pretty much catch you in the grave. How about that? But anyway, those these statements that have been proven, why are they so easy to believe? Have you ever actually sat down with a pencil and a calculator and tried to find the happy ever after to pie? But you, along with others, believe that a cheetah will attack you if you're chased, and that pie is never ending. And you believe this because someone else believed it as well. The only difference is, they actually tested it out, or did the research on the subject. These people who did do the research or tested it out are called experimenters. They have the idea to question the given norm and inspect it for cracks, other known as conspiracy theorists. These conspiracy theorists shape the world by questioning and challenging the norm or its pattern instead of reacting on general expectation. They ask questions like why, if there's bias, and if the author is really reliable. These questions have turned experimenters into experts and conspirators into hardcore contemplators. The world is divided amongst those who read, those who read between the lines, and those who put down the book and test the book's knowledge. These are the ones willing to take the extra step. These are the experimenters. These are the conspiracy theorists. And they are responsible for shaping the world in which we live in today. So here's a question. Are you a conspiracy theorist? Or is Lee Harvey Oswald the actual one who killed JFK? Or was 9-11 just a cover-up? Is Tupac actually dead? Did we actually land on the moon? Or was it just a dusty set with the right lighting? Was AIDS a man-made disease to eradicate the blacks and homosexuals? And most importantly, was Lee Thornton even the one to create this independent study? Or was it her older brother who took research and debate and graduated Columbia a year ago?